Hey guys, so down here on the ground we have uh, these beautiful red berries on this lovely dark green leaf and you probably see these all over in the woods. These are partridge berries. Their Latin name is Michella repens and um, they're one of the first berries that you see in the year because they're autumn berries and they just stay on the bush all winter long and they're an important source of food for wildlife. Uh, and they're just lovely, lovely, lovely. They, uh, they're white inside and they smell kind of vaguely like wintergreen, but not as strong. So that's partridge berry, Michella repens. Hey, hi. I'm up here in the Camel's Hump State Forest. And I've just seen this wonderful, wonderful patch of colt's foot which uh, one of the traditional names for it is Son Before Father because it's one of the few plants that blooms before its leaves come up in the spring. So you look at those beautiful, beautiful flowers. Just look at them up close. Isn't that fantastic? Colt's foot. It's one of the very, very first blooming wildflowers in the spring. I want to show you this flower right here. This is an early blue cohosh. And if you're thinking, wow, that's a creepy looking plant because it's all blue and black and purple. Yeah, that's how it grows. It never really turns green. And when it gets around to it, that flower that's opening up right there, that's going to be like a purple flower with yellow spots on it. And you can be in the forest, turn around and see one of these things and be like, whoa, what's that creepy looking thing? But it's early blue cohosh, and it's one of our earliest wildflowers in the spring. And uh, we have some guesses that why it's so dark is so that it absorbs a lot of heat from the sun. Because it comes up as soon as the snow starts to melt. Fantastic. So here's another early blue cohosh with its blossom a little farther out. Just a fantastic plant. So here's a pair of red trilliums that are blooming here in the forest. They, uh, it's later in their season, so they may not look as fresh as their friends, the variegated ones. No, they look pretty good. You can see they're beautiful. Three petals, three sepals. Aren't they fantastic? Beautiful. Spring wildflowers. So this is a painted trillium and its field marks are these beautiful green leaves, three of them on a long stem coming up out of the forest floor. And these lovely flowers with the little triangle marking that makes a triangle in the center. That pink marking three petals, three sepals. Let me see if I can get close enough and we'll look at the structure of the flower. Look at that. You can see the anthers and that's what produces the pollen and the pistils and that's what catches pollen and this pink bulby thing in the middle. That's where the seed is going to get produced. Just look at the structure of that flower and the beautiful pink rays. So painted trilliums come up in the forest a little bit after red trillium. Um, so these are in better shape than our friends the red trillium right now. Because it's their time. They're beautiful. Painted trillium. I'm out here bushwhacking on a place where there's no trail and no people. Um, so that's okay. It's also, it's land that's open for people to use at this time. But I'm um, up here on this hill, and I don't know if you can see all the way up this beautiful hill, all of these dark green leaves with all these red berries on them. And I know last week we looked at some red berries that were partridge berry, and these are wintergreen. 
actual honk in wintergreen. And if you look at all these twiggy things growing in here, these are going to be low bush blueberries later in the summer. Uh, and they like the same kind of soil as wintergreen likes. But these lovely berries, they taste just like a wintergreen lifesaver. Uh, yeah, that's the real deal, wintergreen. How awesome is that? You look at these leaves, you can see they're shiny. And the berry, when you crush it, smells really strongly of wintergreen. So I'm going to smell real pit pretty for the day. But that's what it looks like when you crush it. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, fantastic. Hey, hi. So uh, I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location in a Vermont state forest. It's really lovely. Let's look around. It's beautiful. Just starting to be green, all the wildflowers and trees. Nothing's really leafed out yet. There's a stream over there. But down here is the thing I want to talk to you about. This is wild ginger. And uh, it is a lovely, lovely plant. Look at that. I'm just going to see if I can get in there and show you the flower. Look at that. That three clawed flower. Put that inside. Isn't fantastic. Look at that. Anyway, that's a, a plant that tastes a lot like um, the Asiatic gingers, but it's not related. It just uh, tastes that way and uh, it's not endangered. Uh, in most states, but it is a plant of some concern because while it is common, it is very slow growing. So it takes a long, long time for this plant to keep producing. And uh, ecologically, it's suffering a lot from habitat loss and from over harvesting. But isn't that lovely? Beautiful, beautiful leaves. And they have a lovely ginger scent. Oh, um, if you're looking at the the field marks for them, you look at this leaf here. It has an almost shiny look to it because it's got all these little hairs on it. And the stem looks fuzzy. And it's kind of heart-shaped. But the real giveaway is that fantastic dark red three-clawed flower. Isn't that beautiful? 